Welcome to Barball Brigade, I'm Gio. Hey guys, I'm Charlie. And I'm Lou. Salam Mike. <laughs> Why, where, where are the smiles? Where are they it's comma, from? comma, and Salam Mike, not and Lou. <laughs> You, you ruined, you ruined oh, our grammar. Said that, he he said, said and Lou, he ruined our grammar. It's all right. It's all right. He just wants to catch you, he wants to make sure you're on your toes. Comma, apostrophe, silent mic. This is where we're wondering now. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, do you guys think that treadmills are a waste of time? Hell yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think they have their place. I, uh, yeah. I, Hell I yeah. <laughs> Why do you think they're a waste of time? I feel like, uh, you know, you're paying, at least for a membership, you're paying to run on this just like moving platform and that's it. You know, when you can literally run anywhere that you want, mm -hmm. whether it's like a park, your street, your What if block. you live in Alaska? You run on the snow, that's gonna be more endurance, right? Rock, Rocky Five. <laughs> so then your angle is people that own a membership and just go to the gym and just utilize a treadmill and then go home. That's I think it's just to silly to wait a long time as far as just like at the gym, uh, you know, when most people go to the gym after work, right? And uh, for a commercial gym, most of the time people wait to use these treadmills or these ellipticals or these type of cardio machines, right? Uh, and they wait a long time to run, you know, when they could literally go outside of the gym and run around the block or even the gym, you know? The worst is you drive and you try to get the best parking spot closest to the door it's and so then you go to the treadmill yeah. to walk. But I you won't was, park in the back of the parking yeah. lot. I used to be that person, not the parking person, because I don't mind walking, but I used to be that treadmill person, because yeah. where I grew up, it was hella ghetto, and yeah. I didn't have that luxury. So yeah. I was going to school full time, yeah. uh, working full time, and then I would get home really late, mm -hmm. but then I still wanted, like, I still, like, uh, yearn for, like, working out. Like, I always need to be moving. Yeah. So I would go to the, I had the gym membership, I would go do my treadmill, then go home. I mean, I agree with, like, it being dangerous, like, some places, and it's, convenient but overall like I feel like there's so many other things that you could do than just run on the treadmill you know and elliptical and stuff what are some examples uh, just like hiking running on the park and stuff like that like I think that's just as good if not more fun you know you can change the, the the scenery all the time you know I just think we're all a little spoiled like me and Charlie are from NorCal it's pretty nice where we're from you guys are yeah. from SoCal it's pretty nice so like we have garage style gyms that are like no air conditioning doesn't really matter uh, but like if you're in Alaska like I said or Russia <laughs> you know like one yeah. maybe maybe hey, they, if Rocky can, Rocky do, it, can like, do it bro that's his mentality if Rocky can do it <laughs> you're not gonna get grandma out there hiking like Rocky Balboa right Dra but, Drago lost to Rocky and he ran on the treadmill that's true. He also took steroids. What a <laughs> cheater! I I think my perspective too. Like I I kind of like to balance out, I guess. But if you were to look at um, fitness as something that someone's trying to pursue, if getting out of their house and getting in the mindset that I'm going to make myself better, even if it is driving to the gym to walk on a treadmill, that could be encouraging for some. Now, is it the best way to gain physical fitness? I don't believe so. There's a lot of things that you can do, but. I wouldn't negate the fact that it's a good piece of equipment because they've been around forever. And most commonly with a background in CrossFit as an influence, it was funny because we saw the navigation away from the treadmill. But now within the last two games and regionals, they've been using the Trueform Runner, which is a self-propelling, I guess is how you would say it, yeah, yeah. Uh, treadmill where it only moves if you're moving. So maybe that could be it's a- like more uh, of a sprint machine. Type. So if, like, if cool. you want to find like a neutral yeah. balance, maybe it'd be like a Trueform Runner where you have to dictate the pace of it and it kind of uh, complements you, uh, making it easier if you're running correctly. Yeah. And if you're running incorrectly, it actually makes it harder, so. Yeah, I agree. Like, what does it do of, as far as just like, uh, for it to address, like if you're running incorrectly or whatever? So basically- It just won't move. It, oh. yeah, if you like don't strike right, like uh -huh. you don't pull with your hamstrings, it just won't so move. You can only or or it or will, it. it's just really hard to yeah, move yeah. it. So like efficiencies with movement, just like anything you do in weightlifting or powerlifting or any other sport, mm. Um, the more uh, effective or efficient the movement is, the easier it is going to be uh, to do. Now you can still push yourself through those domains of uh, exhaustion, but it would be uh, the best for power output by making sure that you're doing it in a proper way. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree that uh, like treadmills maybe not aren't optimal. Like if I was going to put someone through some type of cardio or something, I'd probably go like prowler weighted car uh, weighted carrier, weighted push or pull first. Yeah. Uh, but tons of gyms don't have that. Uh, and I, I don't know why. Like maybe treadmills are useless. 
Like they, they're kind of the norm. They're kind of the maybe, norm. Maybe yeah. the maybe the problem is is that gyms sell the treadmill right. as a piece of fitness, yeah. right. not as a component of fitness. Right. I agree. Exactly. Maybe treadmill. that's what we have to look at. Treadmills and uh, ellipticals, I feel like not so much now, and especially us, it's kind of hard to tell. Like with all these conversations, because we're all like in this weird niche of like strength and conditioning. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't like see anymore what the hell normal people see. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because treadmills have been around since uh, who knows what 60s, 50s, whatever. Uh, but just now, I feel like in 2000. 10, 2000, maybe even six, things are starting to go more uh, strength and conditioning, barbell based, prowler based. Yeah. Uh, where the treadmill is just the norm. You think like, oh, hey, I'm gonna. If your mom says, hey, I'm gonna go to the gym. Yeah. You know she's going on the elliptical or treadmill. Well, yeah. one thing that Charlie and I were discussing last time was like the direction of fitness. Like it's going more definitely towards GPP. You know, like yeah. it's definitely like CrossFit is a perfect example. Um, but do you do you have a treadmill at your gym? No. Do you guys have a treadmill? We don't have a treadmill. Yeah, we don't either. Yeah, we have a prowler and then a sled. Can so you guys explain what GPP is for people that don't know? General, general. physical preparedness. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, I know CrossFit, you know, some people hate it, but CrossFit is the sport of being generally physically yeah. prepared, being ready to do anything. And mm -hmm. then uh, depending on your sport or what you're doing, uh, there's a general line of fitness you need. If you're a golfer, it may be here. If you're a soccer player, it may be up here. Uh, if you're a CrossFitter, it's way up here. Yeah. Uh, and if you're an everyday person, you need to be able to pick up your kids, pick up the grocery, uh, mow the lawn without G any GPP pain. GPP is or... gonna be really ideal for like just the general purpose. As far as just like us, like for me and you maybe, like more, it's gonna be more like SPP, so it's gonna be specialized. Yeah, like... you know me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. Oh no. Oh, oh, the music, the music <laughs> OPP. <laughs> All right guys, how important how important would you say working out abs is? For what? I don't know. I know, it's defining the it purpose is. of the question, right? Um, exactly. I would say not that important. Or or, or, or is it important? I abs. would say it's not that important. Ab, abs as in the outward appearance of like a six pack or abs in the reflection of like core? Give me both. Yeah, that's why I would say not that important. I say core is extremely important. Like I, I think that if anyone could focus on anything outside of just like a general specific way of training, that if you were to train one thing for the rest of your life, training your core is like one of the best things you could do because it connects your upper and lower body, helps with stability as you age, would help you with uh, movement, right? Um, not like like taking a shit, but yeah. like more like movement as well. <laughs> yeah, the bowel movements um, need to be trained as well. It's right? very important. Yeah, right? that I have, is important. I have a strong core there. Um, <laughs> the best the aspect, bowel mover in the West. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with uh, the aspect of like uh, aesthetics, it depends on what is it you want. Like I, I joke around all the time and say that I always have abs. Sometimes they're just undercover. You could have right. a really really strong core and really strong abs, but if if you're a little bit heavier, um, they might not show. And so a lot of times, and you guys probably touched on this too, mm -hmm. I have a lot of athletes, they get frustrated. You can look at even to the highest level of sport for, for what I see for um, that being displayed outside of like the bodybuilding or physique world. And I always mention CrossFit, but if you look at CrossFit athletes, you have someone like Annie Thor, Thor's daughter who has just like, she's not very like dark, she's very fair complected, but you could still see like eight abs. Mm -hmm. Well, Camila Blanc, it is is a little bit darker than her, even though she's from Canada. And then you look at her and she just doesn't really have abs at all. But she was the famous, fittest woman in the world at one point. And you go, well, she doesn't have abs, she must not be strong. It's like, she does have abs, you just might be able to see it. So I think that body types uh, display um, your abdominal wall or the representation of abs as the aesthetic uh, very differently. So Absolutely. I wouldn't, a lot of people I think get caught up into like, I have to be abs for people to think that I'm in shape or I'm jacked. You might be working your ass off on your core and your abs and really have them just due to your body type or your physique or the way that you're built, they just might not show like somebody else's. Yeah. Like Would you when, agree? Yeah, you're like, talking about training abs, right? Uh, I was talking about in general. Not I'm having sorry, abs, training them though. You asked about training yeah, abs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like that's where like, I think when people think about training abs, they think about doing crunches, sit-ups, do side bends or sit-ups, but please don't lose that butt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Maybe what got I, that. But yeah. I got a, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> LA face Oakland booty. Uh, but like uh, Charlie said, like it's more about controlling the midline and that's why like I think squats and deadlifts are some of the best things you could ever do because you don't have to do crunches and just like isolate your abs. Uh, but if you're not controlling your midline, tightening your midline, you're not gonna be able to squat the bar, right? Because you have to transfer that power somehow True. from the ground to your feet, to your knees. And if there's nothing here, you're, the bar's not moving. What does that look like? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Hit me, Do you guys feel like time? targeting your, your core specifically with something that's maybe more transferable, like a plank? Do you think that's going to be more functional as far as yeah, just yeah. like... 
weightlifting maybe and powerlifting? A lot of my experience uh, shows that personal experience, there's no data or whatever going on here, but uh, that when you plank and stuff like that, it teaches you how to control your midline and doesn't, your core, and doesn't always make it stronger. Yeah. It can, but often it's just a cue to then learn how to breathe and brace mm -hmm. to then do an overhead squat okay. or to do a squat. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I well, you I remember can get at stronger. S, at ST, for the longest time, when there was accessory work that I would see when, you know, you and Mark would put us through stuff, it'd be, you know, you put chains on our backs, yeah. we hold planks. And I was talking to a lot of the guys at the OTC Olympic Training Center, and they're saying that um, they have found a lot of studies that not just uh, forearm planks from here, but actually side planks yeah, yeah. play a, a big role in stability and support as well. Because yeah, yeah. a lot of times in the shoulders, you kind of just bear down, right. and more of it's concentrated in the upper body, but they're like, you know, side planks, you can't really yeah, yeah. hide your position there. I think it goes to like, Charlie's saying, like a postural thing. So if you yeah. do a plank the correct way, it doesn't have to like, oh, I feel my abs burning and working. Yeah. Like it's just teaching you posture and bracing, and then you can transfer that to jumping higher, to squatting more, to deadlifting more, or weightlifting more. Yeah. yeah. Well, with asking is it important to train it, I don't know, I guess it depends on your goals. Yeah, yeah. I don't think directly, yeah, what I'm saying. Like yeah. even, even if, or- That's to be very specific. Even if your goals as are as to see yeah. abs, I don't mm. think you have to do crunches to see abs. Everyone's born with whatever abdominal set yeah. they have. You can make them stronger or bigger, mm -hmm. just like every other yeah. muscle, but you can't like mold them. So they're gonna get bigger or smaller depending if you train them, but I don't think you have to train them directly always. I agree, I mean, when I was doing physique, like what? I never trained physique, abs, Lou? I know, bro. You should see his Instagram. Dude, I was, I, was, us, I used to be jacked, but I don't know what happened. Put that on the Too many hot Cheetos. As long as you have the picture, I always feel like if you, like I always yeah, kind yeah. of uh, post a picture, I might not say throwback Thursday uh, or flashback just Friday. Current, just kind of throw it up there and Monday. see if people throwback still believe I have abs, yeah. <laughs> but I was jacked and I never trained abs, yeah, yeah. ever. But it was more of like a diet and kind of like conditioning, some cardio and some weight training, you know? No, that's good that you guys knew that because I know when I, like I had no idea anything about fitness. I yeah. was like in high school and I, I wanted the abs and I wanted to look yeah. dope. So I'm like, I gotta do a hundred crunches. And I was just doing like, what are, what are these called? Jumping jacks? Yeah. yeah. That's it. I'm gonna look great. Yeah, yeah. We only know, like, yeah. me, me and Charlie and Dan. Nadine, uh, do it, I almost called you Nadim. Nadim. <laughs> Twice? <laughs> me, me, Charlie, <laughs> and Lou have both been doing this. All three of us have been doing this for a long ass time. Mm -hmm. And, like, I know I made those mistakes. That's the only reason I know now. Yeah. Because I did crunches and I did ab wheels only. The crunch I wasn't, machine. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. doing squats or deadlifts or anything standing overhead, nothing. Yeah. And then I was like, fuck, I'm just gonna go crunches. Like, yeah. that's the only reason we learned. Because well, we've all fucked up, too. And then a funny thing, too, too for, for me now, knowing my body for the way that I've trained. Um, my wife always jokes with me and she's like, oh, you're getting ready for our vacation. Like, there'll be a shift in my training sometimes, but I know that I could be strong in my midline, but to have my core exposed, I know for me personally, if I just restrict a little bit of carbs, um, one of the best movements for me to have my stomach get more developed is like a movement like toes to bar, or something that's not just isolated, but there's like flexion and extension yeah. in my entire body because you also, are gonna be able to work like higher striations within the upper stomach and, mm. the, and then you just, there's more to it. I think sometimes like crunchies, they might just isolate the top tier, right? Or you, then you have five or six different exercises that hit the every position of your ab. If you just find full body movements that work on core to extremity, Maybe. even outside of your squat, pull, yeah. whatever, if you are gonna work an abdominal exercise, work one that works the full range of motion, the entire movement. Not just like, um, like specifically picking a spot and working it because then then you have a workout that's an hour working yeah. on each side, then you're doing all this other stuff. Just functional movements, I think, are the best. Yeah, that's that's funny, my perspective. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you say that. I mean, a lot of the top athletes are doing that. You know, weightlifters are doing gymnastics, and like, yeah. that's all gonna cause like a lot of like stretching and, and like contracting as far as just like even hanging from rings is, you know, a lot of core work. And these guys are, look, are looking like really jacked, you yeah. know, like these gymnasts were, and weightlifters are yeah. jacked. Not always American. I no, been gymnastics yeah, were pretty good. Uh, gymnastics guys yeah, are freaking jacked, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Great. yeah. Okay. Whoa. You're getting really excited over there. <laughs> they look great. They look like me. <laughs> She's like, do you see Very all these similar. people? I <laughs> well, thank you guys for great information. Back but... to your jumping jacks. <laughs> I know, it was like this. <laughs> what are these? I don't know, I was dancing. <laughs> anyway, if there are any other questions you guys would like for us to answer, please leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like the video, share with all your friends. Until next time, thank you. Deuce, deuce. Do you think it's a good idea to yeah. lift while pregnant? Uh, personally? What? Personally? Yeah, yeah. Well, talk us through your last <laughs> pregnancy. Your last so I'm about three months. Uh, I'm really